Hello, and welcome back to another video. Um, today we're talking about Rhyme, a charming adventure slash puzzle game which was developed by a team called Tequila Works. And Rhyme follows the story of a child who wakes up on this island and goes on a journey to discover its mysteries. If you look at the title of this video, you'll see I've used the word superficial, which is not a very positive word, but let me try and explain what I mean here. This game kind of confused me, left me feeling a bit unsure, and I'm going to try and express this through briefly answering a few hypothetical questions. One. Is Rhyme a good game? Like, I guess so. Kind of. Like, hmm. Two, did I enjoy playing Rhyme? Again, kind of? It's complicated. As a whole, probably not. Three, would I play it again? I really don't think I would. As you can tell, probably just from my voice, <laughs> this game's got me a bit modelled. I'd also just like to say now that this video is going to have spoilers in, so if you're not into that, give the game a play and pop back over later. And, but anyway, Rhyme has got generally favourable reviews, with a lot of them focusing on the game's visuals, and if you look up reviews for the game, you'll struggle to find one that doesn't wax lyrical about the game's appearance and charm, using words like beautiful, vibrant, gorgeous. And I really think there's little argument there, and I would like to talk about it for a bit, because the game is a sensory experience honestly worth having. The visual style is outstanding, being incredibly reminiscent of games like Wind Waker, and with definite nods to the feel you get during the Ico, Shadow of the Colossus, Last Guardian games. Everything is really beautifully crafted to create an engaging and believable environment, with things like water physics, big underwater segments, and light mechanics all being put into great effect to help you feel both the huge scope and unavoidable loneliness that comes with exploring such expansive and overwhelming settings. The design elements also come into play here. The game has no dialogue, and has to teach you and point you in the right direction solely through design choices, which manifest primarily in visual cues, the most prominent example of which is this fox which leads you along in the right direction, and it is very, very charming. I have so few complaints when it comes to the game's appearance, there are occasional frame rate issues, but honestly it's not really that much of a bother. If you combine the visuals with the game's soundtrack, you've really got some pairing there. It might sound a bit hyperbolic, but Rhyme's soundtrack is without doubt one of the best I've heard in years. It is just outstandingly good. It combines soft and delicate sounds with fierce and breathtaking progressions so unbelievably well, I can't compliment it enough. It reminds me a lot of Joe Hisaishi's style, um, the guy who's best known for doing the music in the Studio Ghibli films, as well as Nino Kuni on the PS3. If you're into that, then this will absolutely blow you away. Now cast your mind back to earlier in the video, where I said things like that I thought the game was kind of good, and that I didn't enjoy the experience that much as a whole. This whole thing probably seems a bit strange now, because I've said I wasn't that into the game, but I've just gone on about how gorgeous and unforgettable an experience it is. But as I said, this game's confused me. I want to like it much more than I do, but I just can't. I'm very close to it, but I'm just not there. And let me try and explain to you why. As much as this game drew me in with its beautiful environments, it pushed me away again by how vapid and shallow the gameplay was. Most of the gameplay is comprised of two components, platforming and puzzles, and both are relatively uninspired, honestly. The platforming is always incredibly basic, and often suffers from inconsistency issues when it comes to grabbing ledges or making big jumps, and going through the game, I never felt entirely comfortable with the controls. They're, they're fine, but I don't think fine is good enough in a game like this. Part of what Rhyme wants to do, and needs to do to be successful, is immerse the player, and put them in the shoes of the protagonist. Controls probably aren't the first thing that come to mind when you think about how to simulate the feeling of immersion you want, but bad controls or platforming physics break immersion instantly. If at any point you feel as if your natural progression through the game is being hindered by something, you're dragged out of the game back into reality. Rhyme cannot afford to let this happen. If at any point you disengage from the game and stop putting your full attention into it, both the game and your experience with it suffer. Unfortunately, the puzzles also don't demand your full attention, and break your immersion too because most of them are mindless and insipid. Some are interesting conceptually, like puzzles which use light and perspective, but at certain points, I think it's even debatable as to whether puzzle is a legitimate word to describe some of them. They all feel so much more like you're just going through the motions than actually solving anything or making any meaningful progression. You'll do stuff like collecting keys and pushing crates, which is pretty hackneyed and stale. And in spite of the huge scope the game provides in terms of environments, puzzles are awfully linear. This may come across as arrogant, which isn't my intention, but I didn't find any of the puzzles remotely difficult. And this is not because of my own ability, it's because of the puzzles. For example, there are puzzles in the game which can be solved just by pushing the analogue stick for long enough to get stuff lined up right. It's not a puzzle. You never feel challenged, you never feel that eureka moment. And a lot of the time, it just feels like filler, like arbitrary obstacles just there to make the game longer, or to provide the illusion of challenge. 
I understand that one retort to this could be that rhyme isn't about challenge, and to an extent I'd agree. However, as, as I said earlier, it's simple puzzle after simple puzzle after simple puzzle, and it really takes you out of the immersion you want to be feeling because most of it is just boring and banal, and feels more like a chore than a game at points. The bulk of the game is alternation between puzzles and lengthy and frankly dull platforming segments. It's not fun. Unfortunately, the gameplay is generally quite languid and forgettable. It might seem a bit out of place, but I want to talk about another game for a second here. I played another platformer called Seasons After Fall earlier this year, a game which drew me in with its gorgeous hand-painted visuals and conceptually interesting gameplay mechanics of changing the season to solve puzzles. This gameplay reminds me of Rhyme in a lot of ways, because they're both shallow in gameplay. The gameplay and whole direction of Seasons After Fall was somewhat unfinished, unimaginative, and generally difficult to force yourself through, which is what Rhyme feels like at times. Both games are aesthetically magnificent, but lack arguably the most important component in a memorable and enjoyable game experience, which is engaging gameplay. This is the main thing that makes games differ from other media, and I think Seasons After Fall is another example of how this should not be a secondary concern. Anyway, let's recap this all briefly. The visuals and music are outstanding, the gameplay is not. To bring up that superficial feeling again, I feel like I can only enjoy the game on a surface level because as much as it shines in some regards, it falls inexcusably short in others. Now here's where I get myself even more muddled up with how I feel about the game because I want to talk about the story now. To sum it up in a sentence, Rhyme teases you. There's no exposition, no dialogue, nothing. All you have as you go through are tiny, tiny snippets of what might be going on, which are provided in the form of things like murals, this huge tower, this ever out of reach hooded figure, and these unsettling Dementor esque things. And between levels, you're also granted these short flashback sequences in which you're on a boat during a storm. I feel like the game set itself a trap here, because it teases too much. Let's look at this from the perspective of someone playing the game for the first time, as someone who doesn't know anything about the game. These components are undoubtedly enough to maintain intrigue, and from a personal perspective were almost entirely what helped me get through the perfunctory gameplay. I did want to know who the hooded figure was, the significance of this tower, what these shadowy creatures were, and in that sense, the game has done its job in a way. It's kept me interested enough to keep me playing. But here's where I think we should be honest. The game is not easy to figure out. The clues are just too vague, and perhaps come too seldom. Until the end, I really was not sure what was going on, but when the ending hit, the whole game made sense, to be fair. Again, this splits my opinion right down the middle, because I thought the ending was actually pretty good, but it didn't really affect me. I'll sum it up briefly here. The child you control has been dead the entire time, and from my understanding of it, his journey represents two things. One is the child's journey into death, the other one is the father's journey into accepting this. The boat flashbacks are relevant as the child died from falling overboard whilst on a boat with their father, and this explains why the game starts washed up on a mysterious island. When you finish the game and head back to the main menu, you can pick stage select, and you see that each level in the game represents a different stage of grief, with the ending being acceptance, as the father comes to see that his child really is dead and manages to let his pain go. Now, with this realisation, I came to view the whole game differently, as a lot of it started to make sense. The fox that guides you on your journey is based on one of the child's toys, which would obviously provide them with a sense of comfort and familiarity during such an arduous experience. The shadowy figures are perhaps dead who fail to find rest, and filled with bitterness, attack the child if he comes too close. After the ending, the game makes sense, but that's kind of what annoys me, to be honest. There are two problems endemic to this kind of narrative. The first one is that there simply wasn't enough exposition or reason to care. The only concrete piece of story comes 99% of the way into the game, and tries to instill a sense of meaning into the rest of the game, and it's just too little too late. The ending is beautiful, full of emotion and melancholy, but just didn't affect me like it should have. I find this to be a real shame because I think the ending is objectively quite good, and I enjoy it solely for that reason. But I also don't enjoy it because I don't feel enough reason to care about this story. This leads to the other problem here, and that's that you feel like the game would perhaps warrant another playthrough to best understand it. And although I don't have a problem with replayability in games generally, it's something I quite enjoy, it leaves me a bit miffed here. I have no doubt that I would have a deeper and more comprehensive understanding of Rhyme's narrative if I replayed the game with my newfound perspective on its meaning, but this leads me back to my final hypothetical question from earlier. I do not want to replay the game. I, I would like to further my understanding of the story, but I have no desire to play it again primarily because of how uninteresting the gameplay is, and this is why this game leaves me frustrated and confused. There's a very fine line here between brilliance and boredom. Rhyme is just walking on the wrong side of this line for me. 
It's like, this game is either going to be a 5 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. And if it had gone a different way, it would have no doubt been a 9 for me. I like so much about this game, it does so much right in concept, but I think it's just a strong cause for gameplay being an unignorably necessary component of game design. At points it feels like an afterthought in Rhyme, playing second fiddle to features that do shine through, like the music, but this indelibly hampers the whole experience. All in all, I don't know what to say about it really, or how to feel. All I know is that at points I enjoyed the game, but this enjoyment I felt was incomplete and, to be honest, superficial, as I said. And having seen the potential this game had, it makes me wonder what an unforgettable experience this could have been if things had gone slightly differently. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. Um, thank you very much for watching to the end. I feel like this might be a video that splits opinion, so if you agree or disagree, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like or subscribing, it really helps the channel. And thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.